Good morning, everybody. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. You're very welcome to our webinar stroke workshop this morning on the Cade Mila Falsha Art Project, Art Workshops Celebrating Migrant Families in Ireland. And we're delighted to have uh, the two people behind this project, Sean Corcoran, an artist from the uh, Art Hand. Hey, Sean. How's it going, guys? And uh, Mary Carberry from Waterford Library. Hi, Mary. Morning, how are you? And um, so I'm going to hand over to Sean now to start the ball. Is it Sean, are you starting? Uh, I can do if you like. Yep. Or is it Mary? Um, I thought I'd start maybe and give kind okay. of a little bit of background and then Sean can jump in with all the exciting uh, details <laughs> from it. <laughs> okay. okay. So, grand. So over I'm just going to grand and just try and share my screen there for a minute if I can. Yeah. Grant, can you see? Are you able to see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Grant. Okay. So it's the as first. My my name is Mary Carberry. I work for Washford Libraries. Um, I'm schools and children's librarian. I'm also the right to read coordinator. I see Karen on on there, a fellow right to read coordinator from uh, another library authority. So she'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is just about our Cade Mila Foyta art programme, which uh, was held, it started in 2019. So it was basically a programme for migrant families to work with an artist uh, to explore a range of cultural traditions. And then we wanted to capture the work in a specially commissioned book. So dormant funds, account our dormant accounts funding was made available by the government it was from the national lottery and all the local library authorities were invited to apply now we went big on it as you can see there so we uh, wanted the artist the book design the printing and then for the workshops we provided snacks for them with the launch, which you can see in red, obviously, unfortunately, didn't happen. And then as part of it, uh, the library authority had to provide 10% of the funding. So our estimate for the costs was uh, around 17,000 euro. So thankfully, we were successful with that. So the first thing then was to go on the hunt for an artist. So we advertised in the local newspapers in Washford and through the Washford Council tender box. We got five applications, one of which was invalid. So the four were assessed with the scoring sheet. Everybody was notified and Sean was successful um, in securing the contract. So we had to arrange the contract then and the guard of vetting. Then we met to promote the programme. So we did that through Washford Libraries, the social media. We contacted the direct provision centres in Washford, uh, the Syrian Resettlement Programme, the Washford City and County Migrant Integration Forum and the Washford Wexford Education and Training Board. I'm sure we have some members from ETBs here as well this morning and you probably link in with your local libraries as part of the whole Right to Read program. So after we are we announced and promoted the program, and then we held a series of meetings, myself and Sean and Rosemary from the Washford Childcare Committee. So just to organize times, dates, and locations of workshops and the content of the workshops. And part of the brief for the artist was that they had to provide all the materials was included in the cost of the funding to the artist. So they had to provide all the materials and wow, did Sean provide materials for us to use. <laughs> so we set up a series of three workshops in three locations. So we had Central Library, which is in Washford City, Dungarvan Library in the county. And then we uh, opted for Kappa Quinn uh, as another centre. Uh, with a good relationship with the ETB group there. Unfortunately, Kappa Quinn Library is quite small. So the um, ETB made a room available to us in the Adult Learning Centre in Kappa Quinn, which was fantastic. And then we just set about promoting that the parents had to attend the workshops with the children and assist them, that it wasn't just drop them for two hours and come back, obviously to do all with child protection, 
etc that they had to be on the premises at all times and then we had to obviously arrange the child protection policies and the photography consent forms to be signed because we did want to use the images how they ran it they obviously ran it in a library but okay we wouldn't okay. be running it in the library or anything i don't even know what it is now we missed, I missed the first part yeah. but at least i send it on the way you know which is great okay so then on the day of the workshop um, we just set up in the uh, set up to organize the running of the workshop, bring in all the materials. I'm sure Sean has photographs of his van, which was packed to bursting with bamboo sticks, sand, you name it, Sean had it. And then we set about taking the photographs. We provided refreshments and the transporting of the materials. So you can just see here the attendance at the workshops. The Central Library was on a Saturday morning from half 10 to 12. So the first week we had just one family. The second week then we had four families. And the third week we had two families. And then Dungarvan Library was in Saturday afternoon, which kind of turned out to be a bit of a a nightmare by the time we packed up in Central Library and travelled to Dungarvan, <laughs> it was fairly hectic. So we kind of, in hindsight, realised we should have just run one workshop a day. But look, that was just part of the learning curve. So the Dungarvan Library, as you can see, was the most popular and the most consistent. And then the Kappa Quinn Centre, we started, we had three families, two families. And then unfortunately, we started Kappa Quinn a week later than advertised due to circumstances beyond our control. So the last date, the families weren't able to commit. So it was just Sean and myself making art that day. So, um, yeah, that was that. And then the just after all the workshops, then we had meetings to discuss the content of the book and also the title. So we just settled on Cade Mila Foyle to we felt that it kind of encapsulated everything we were trying to do and then we had to go through we'd like nearly 5,000 photographs from all the workshops to narrow those down and shortlist them uh, finalize the layout and content that was part of the tender process and luckily Sean was talented and able to do all that the layout and the design of the book as well so that was great then we had to organize the translation of the words we had I think people from 11 or 12 different countries. So we would organized the translation of the words into the different languages. And 2000 books then were printed and delivered in March, 2020. And then you all know what happened in 2020. So it kind of, we, the launch was organized for April. So unfortunately that didn't happen due to COVID, the launch was canceled. We distributed books to each participating family. We sent them to all the ELCs um, around. Then in December, as part of family time at your library, Sean worked with some TY groups um, around the country uh, just to provide workshops on the background to the book. So books went out to those participants. And then we were delighted as well this year that 600 copies were included in wellbeing packs, were just which were distributed um, as part of a SIPSI and Faroiga Healthy Ireland Just Grow project for families with mental health, and we got great feedback from that. So, all going well. We have plans to launch and promote the book in spring. That should say 2022. Um, apologies for that. And um, just we were very happy with the whole program. So. It's definitely replicable that anybody can do it. So the use of the environmental materials to promote art and literacy was very successful. But the artist definitely is the key to the success of the programme. And I'll just put my details here on the screen. Um, so I'm in Washford Library, Mary Carberry. So my email is mcarberry at washfordcouncil.ie. They're my contact numbers. Uh, copies of the book are available. So I'll, I can, I'll go back over the details maybe again at the end. So if anybody would like copies of the book to use with groups, I can organize to have them sent to them. So yeah, so that was the, that's just kind of how it all came about and what happened. So I'll hand you over now to Sean and he'll tell you a bit more about the workshop than that. You're on mute, Sean. 
Now, can you hear me now? Perfect. So uh, thanks a million, Mary. That it, like I mean, it's wonderful to hear um, <clears throat> that the, the amount of detail in what you've just said there, Mary, is incredible. And and like you you kind of said that the uh, the artist was crucial. But I can tell you one thing, um, like yourself, in terms of the paperwork and the input, like you can just see it from th those uh, slides. Like, you know, th this is quite an ambitious, uh, you know, project to, uh, you know, so we don't want to frighten anyone off and kind of think, oh, my God, this is way beyond the realms of what you've got going on with, in your group, in your setting, in your school, in your classroom or with your families um, out there. So. It is scalable down. I mean, it's obviously scalable up as well, but just, you know, we don't want anyone to think it's too far beyond the realms of, uh, of, of, of what you can uh, possibly do with your group. So, so we're gonna try and bring it all back down to a very, very simple kind of a level. Like, I mean, as Mary was saying, I mean, this here is the book. Um, so it was wonderful to get an actual physical publication in our hat with so many things are digital these days. That is wonderful that you know two thousand copies of this get circulated. So it's um it's what I think it's forty or forty five pages something like that. Um, uh, it's it, there's eleven languages uh, used throughout the book. And as Mary was saying, we settled on the Irish phrase uh, "Cade Mila uh as the title. Uh, Hundred thousand welcomes. Um, you know because. Uh, uh, for, for, from our perspective, you know, apart from the literacy side of things, it really was focused on welcoming migrant families into Ireland. And from whatever language or from whatever uh, country they were from, um, it, for us, it was beyond uh, language, really. It was a kind of more about communication than language. Um, so even though there is 11 la different languages listed uh, in the book, uh, used in the book, for me, I suppose it was the extra language uh, or the extra type of communication, which was the the, the art. So the, for me, <clears throat> I was amazed. I mean, it's a real learning exercise for me to kind of, uh, you know, to be able to communicate um, with people that had no English. And it was beautiful, just with simple themes that are included in the book. Uh, literally, these little themes, it could be home or it could be welcome, could be food. Um, uh, could be fire, things that are common to us all, uh, no matter where we're from. Um, so those kind of themes, they develop themselves organically, naturally, just by literally bringing in these materials, straw, sand, clay, feathers, eggs from my fridge. Um, and you'll see in some of the some of the presentations, some of the images and stuff, like literally very, very, very accessible materials. Now, as Mary was saying, by the end of the nine workshops, I literally had a van full of stuff and uh, on the final day I do remember opening the double doors in the back of the van and all the stuff fell out onto the floor in Kappa Quinn in the car park and uh, but it was it, it is such an eclectic thing that when you when you say to a family or say to a group about materials like uh, I, I, I ha I've done a lot of work in schools with uh, with mosaic for example and mosaic a little bit different to this but mosaic is about gathering what we call treasure and a little kid will look up at you and say, but I don't have any treasure. And if you say a simple thing like, uh, well, do you have a drawer next to your bed or what's underneath your bed? Or what about in the kitchen? Like, I mean, I can tell you one thing. I've got three drawers in the kitchen that are just full of like elastic bands and uh, used batteries. Are they used or was there a bit of power left? All these things that end up in these drawers or under the bed. And for me, gathering materials is really key to the success you know, of a project like this. So, so yes, support your local, um, your local arts and crafts shop. Um, but there's materials outside your front door, inside your home, in the school grounds, you know, this time of year, uh, it's been amazing the last few weeks, uh, the leaves that are falling off the trees. I mean, the colours, the autumnal colours now, I know it's heading into winter now, but I mean, the, the, you know, it's been a bit slow arriving to winter in the last week or two with the temperatures being a bit higher than normal. But, but the leaves, I mean, the reds and the oranges and the yellows and the colours and the, the, the sticks that are on the ground and, you know, the incredible light in the sky, like the outdoors is absolutely amazing at the moment. So just a little bit of background on me. I'm an environmental artist. Uh, so most people would know me for um, working on the beach, working on the sand. I must, I, most people... I draw massive pictures on beaches with a garden rake. Um, and you've done and, but, and a marriage proposal, Sean. 
Oh, several, several at this stage now. Uh, yeah, all successful, Mary. Yeah, yeah. Nobody has said no yet. Uh, so, so yeah. So, so it's so it's it's quite an eclectic mix. I mean, I do work with a lot of groups and on collaborative projects uh, like this. But I suppose my own personal work would be kind of getting down on the beach and creating drawings and capturing them with uh, time lapse photography and so on. Uh, so that's kind of my my background: recycled materials, environmental art. And my wife and I run a studio here called the Art Hand. And the art and up until the lockdown was an art school where we literally specialize in working with groups. But now uh, my wife is an artist as well. She's specializing in her own work and I'm kind of returning back to my own personal work as well on the beach. So working on lots of projects and festivals around Ireland and the UK and even as far as Texas uh, before the lockdown, uh, just before the lockdown, actually, I was working on a festival over there. But uh, enough about me. Back to the project. So K. Mila Falcha it was a, a means of welcoming migrant families to Ireland uh, through a series of workshops. So there's nine workshops in the three locations, as Mary has said. And what we did is um, we chose, gathered all the materials and it was a beautiful organic uh, process because each week we kind of responded to what worked best uh, for each group. Um, like when we brought uh, straw along, uh, like I thought this idea, just as I was running out the idea, why not? Why not? Uh, why not grab some eggs? So I just got some uh, some he some hen's eggs from my fridge just as I was going out, and my wife was kind of saying, "Where are you going with the eggs?" I said, "Well, um, leave it with me." And so we so, so like that became one of the symbols of the project. To be honest, was uh, the eggs and the nests. You know, the, 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 I mean, if you if you bring in a, a a bundle of straw and half a dozen eggs into a group, I can guarantee you, within moments, they will be building nests. And if you have a few feathers that have been collected from the uh, from the park or from the beach, uh, literally a bundle of feathers before long, they'll be decorating the nest with feathers. Then if you add um, like there's one what there's one um, take one really simple takeaway I would suggest for any of you for groups is go to your arts and crafts supply shop and buy a bag of air drying clay. Uh, it's about 14 or 15 euros a bag. Uh, you get a nice uh, lump of clay. It's difficult to find in nature, and some of the areas that 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 uh, has natural clay that will air dry uh, can be a preserved area. Could be in a bog or access is difficult, and so on. You don't want to disturb a shoreline where some of this soft clay can can, can erode uh, nature. So in that case, I would buy a bag of uh, air drying clay. It's it'll last you for weeks and weeks and weeks and months. Even uh, you can put a damp towel. You know, in a, in, a, in a refuse bag in a, or in, in the bag that it came with, put a damp towel in with it after you use it. And the next time you open it up, it will be all soft again. It'll be perfect. So air drying clay is such a beautiful tactile material and you can simply stick, uh, you can stick feathers into it. Uh, you can put bamboos in it. You can you can do all kinds of structural stuff that you don't need uh, sellotape or glue or string uh, if you have some air drying clay. So that would be my first uh, my first tip uh, in terms of raw material. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to try and share my screen. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you a little video. Hopefully you can see my screen there. Uh, I'm going to show you a little video um, of some of the workshop in progress. Um, so, so basically, I was the main photographer um, and my son Alfie, who's 11, also took photographs on the project and we, we compiled all the images together and created, shortlisted, as Mary said, down to uh, from nearly 5,000 back to 135, 135 images are included in the book. Um, and uh, my screen is actually crashing there. So uh, I don't know if you can you can you see my my second screen's got a piece of sand art on it. No, Sean, we, we could see that beach one for a minute, but then it it, it disappeared. Okay. It seems to be coming up again. Oh no, it's just you. Oh, okay. Okay. So so uh, I, what I'm what I'm going to do with my shared screen is we're going to go old school. We're going to go face to face. You're going to have to concentrate on the book, right? And I also have um, I also have my phone over here so if it comes to it i'll uh, play it on my second screen and i'll film it from here and we'll go I've had to do this before when when technology fails we'll go uh, uh, we, uh we'll transfer it some some way like that um Perfect. so uh so so back to the book then to start with so i'm going to just give you an outline of some of the themes okay 
So, so for us, this symbol, as I was saying on the front, the bird, the feathers, there's the air drying clay. And this symbol, this little kid, Japanese girl, her hands, uh, she kind of became our uh, poster girl for the project. And here she is on the uh, double blank page to start the book, which I do like. Uh, and then here she is here, um, our Japanese, I think she was Japanese, Mary, uh, uh, wasn't she? Uh, so, so there she is, uh, and the simplicity of just a little bit of air drying clay, uh, stuck a little pebble in for his beak and his eyes and a feather for his tail. And suddenly you have such a beautiful poignant image. And then, so, so this is the first double page, and this basically is um, uh, the theme of home. So obviously home uh, is a universal thing and as you know we all think of it in a different way perhaps um but it, it so so for us um like we weren't we weren't we weren't prescribing uh, the themes each week um really it was about bringing the materials and seeing what came of it like for example with the nest uh, the idea i can see i can see a box of straw back there and you know, when you bring these materials to a group, personally, I prefer allowing the project to evolve organically so that you're not saying, right, this week we're doing home, right? To be honest, this image for us, when Mary and Rosemary and I were kind of compiling the 135 images, this image for us said home. You see there's two or three families, there's three families here, I think it is. Uh, you know, so for us, we kind of, brought that theme around based on the how the project developed. And that would be something. Now, I know if you're in a busy primary school and you've got 30 children in front of you, uh, it can be difficult uh, to kind of like go, it can be a bit daunting to go, you know, into the class with just a load of materials and no brief. But I really, really, really would highly recommend uh, trying it, um, you know, rather than, um, ending up with um, 30 identical penguins at the end of the day, um, you know, um, just, it's, it's, you know, and, and, and sometimes in a school, it can, it can end up being the teacher that's after doing three quarters of the work in advance. Um, so I just really would highly recommend it. That's the second takeaway I could suggest from today's webinar is get the air clay, get the air drying clay. And second thing is, be brave, be bold, challenge yourself, bring the materials without a theme, and you'll see magic will happen in front of you. So this was the second page, and this was the welcome page. So you can see the different languages. Um, the, the English English written up there, I think that's uh, Urdu, Pakistan, the second one. And then we have uh, Mandarin, Mandarin uh, Chinese in the corner. And so these are all translations. Um, uh, and then in the corner we have Polish, and up the top we have Turkish, and in the middle there I see Fortia, uh, Irish, Oskelge. So there's 11 languages, so that was the second theme was welcome, okay? So that, that's the nature of how the book is laid out. Uh, so the third page then is, uh, is home. So, wait now, so the first page was welcome, first page was hello, First page was hello, then it was uh, welcome, and then it is home. So, so, so you see these little kind of structures made of straw, pebbles, everything was gathered. What, what does a home mean to you? It could be a skyscraper. It could be a primitive structure like this Sudanese family I remember made. So if you have the materials, um, laid out, a magic will happen. Um, so, and, and here is the nest page. And I suppose this for me was uh, my favorite part of the project in terms of the breakthrough that the simple idea of bringing straw and eggs uh, and feathers, um, it's got an immediate, you immediately want to put the eggs and the straw together. And whether you're a little toddler there, four-year-old or five-year-old, whatever, it immediately resonates with you. So if there's a third takeaway I would suggest would be find the farmer that has some straw or your friend that has a horse uh, 
you know, or somebody in the group who has a horse at home, uh, get some straw. Hay will work as well. Um, uh, or you can go to a farmer's field when he's after cutting straw and get some off the edge of the corner of the field. There'll always be loads left over on the corners. Um, and and bring in a half a dozen eggs uh, and some straw. And that for me would be uh, the third takeaway. Um, and I suppose you might think, oh, well, eggs, they're going to be uh, like four-year-olds and five-year-olds. They're going to be they're going to be smashed. They're going to be broken. Uh, well, uh, I have to say, uh, the, uh, however many families and kids were on this project, I was the only one that broke the eggs by accident. In uh, I think that was in Dungarvan, uh, in the library in Dungarvan, and the um, the new administrator of the library, she was very she was very grateful. She was very gracious, and uh, on her first day on the job, that the artist had come in with the eggs and broken them on her floor. But but she was she was very 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 kind. Uh, so think outside the box. Uh, alternative materials uh, like and that nest, as I say really was uh, one of my favorite parts of the project. Uh, so the next page we have here is food. And again, um, this kid here, uh, it was uh, pizzas. So, so she's making, um, you see me there down the corner uh, pretending to be eating the, uh, the pizzas. So she's making them up here. Uh, and again, you know, English certainly wasn't the main language. Uh, but the simple idea of like, what would you have on your pizza? I mean, pizza is a universal word. Like, I mean, wherever you're from, you're going to know that word. Uh, and like, for, I mean, look at this pizza down in the corner here. It's got Monopoly houses as the uh, ingredients uh, and some um, and some sawdust and all on some air drying clay. Um, and I suppose when you look about materials as well, um, when you think about materials, I would say this, that um, boys in particular, uh, um, sometimes uh, boys don't get to play with, uh, they kind of grow out uh, of the kind of tactile, you know, they don't put their hands into things as much. So, so like some of the kind of eight, nine, 10 and 11 year old boys uh, that were on the project, you know, they're kind of like, oh, a bucket of sand. Oh no, I, I want to go home. This is not this project is not for me. But once they got sticking their hands into air drying clay or into straw, you'll see they'll become really entranced in the idea of this tactile material. And even when I bring um, when I bring groups to the beach, um, um, whatever age they are, to be honest, uh, um, uh, let's say they're uh, sixth class um, to the beach, and they're kind of at that age where they're kind of a little bit more mature, and they're kind of like, oh yeah. And I've got all like, I've got rakes for everybody. I've got all the equipment, all the tools, everything you need. And first thing I, I often do on a beach when you bring kids to the beach, you say, right, roll up your sleeves and get down on your knees and start digging. And digging with your hands on a beach is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing because there'll be, of a group of 30 kids, um, five or six of them won't do it for the first minute or two. Then they'll slowly take to it. There'll still be one that aren't, isn't doing it after two or three minutes. They'll start to take, they'll be, the, they'll be the person that when you go to move on to the next part of the project, uh, they'll be still there digging frantically, uh, digging, digging, digging. They're after finding water, they're after building a tunnel. So just simple things like that. Less tools and more, more tactile is what I would say. That would be a good takeaway. Takeaway four, I think that is. Uh, less tools and more tactile. So tactile materials. People are a little bit intimidated, adults as well, uh, even sometimes more than kids about like getting stuck in and getting uh, getting themselves covered in um, clay or paint or stuff like that. And in fact, um, like uh, finger painting is one of my favorite things uh, to do with groups and like uh, literally no paintbrushes, no paintbrushes, uh, uh, just your hands. And we have all these, these paint. And I remember doing a workshop in a primary school one time um, uh, where we had done we had done a sculpture workshop with with clay the first week and the second week I said now next week we're going to do uh, finger painting with just our hands so the teacher was like and now what way do I have to uh, lay out the room will I need um oh I said just um don't worry it's just um poster paint uh, gouache it'll, it'll wash off it'll you know everything will be fine so I walked in the next week and um the teacher um very well into the project now but she just um, uh, she had wallpapered the entire room, the floor with newspaper, uh, the, the tabletops, the chairs, the floor, the entire floor. Now, I mean, the entire floor, uh, every surface in the room was like uh, newspaper. Now, 
and and of course it was a boy, well it was a boys' school and they were all there like maybe this is normal like I mean, this is what we have to do to use a bit of paint so like I had to keep a straight face and um, we did the workshop it was amazing and tidied up afterwards but 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 like um, that whole idea of less tools and more tactile I mean boys love getting their hands into paint um, you know and you know it's dripping down their hands or whatever uh, you know it takes it's, there's always going to be one or two who's going like no I'm not putting my hands in there. Uh, but you know, a little bit of coaxing, and when they see the rest of the group, so that would be for me a big takeaway. So back to the project. So the Cade Mila Falter uh, book um, for um, really for me, every week what I did was come along with new materials each week. Um, so like on the way there or during that week, I'd be down on the beach, so I'd be getting seaweed. Um, there was a beautiful uh, tree that had been chainsawed. Um, uh, for safety uh, in Anstown. Uh, and it was the most beautiful scented uh, sawdust uh, that I managed to, to, to be remember that bucket of sawdust, Mary. It was the most beautiful stuff, absolutely beautiful golden sawdust. Uh, so each week it was a case of bringing new materials uh, to the group and seeing what we could make. And um, so again, uh, like with, with, with men, um, like again, I, 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 I'm, tr I'm trying to be as broad-minded as possible as well, but sometimes um, an adult or a parent um, might be slow to, as Mary was kind of saying, some parents um, kind of were, were thinking, um, you know, it's just a drop them off kind of a situation, you know, so once we explain that, no, we want the daddies involved too. Uh, and, and, you know, not, trying not to generalize, but often, it's the case of the mummies uh, do a lot more of the hands-on uh, kind of work. And here we have the, uh, so here's the uh, femme, uh, the woman uh, page as well. So so it was, for me, it was great to communicate with the dads as well, because there was a little bit of reluctance, as you probably see in family groups. You know, the dad is kind of like, you know, not really into that kind of thing or whatever. Uh, and it was easier for the women to get to get involved. So, so kind of breaking down that barrier as well was a kind of key part for me. Um, so, so you see this, this uh, African lady here has built the most beautiful African uh, figure just out of a couple of, uh, they look like uh, skewers. Uh, uh, yeah, they look like uh, wooden, wooden sticks. Uh, uh, and she's used air drying clay. She's got some leaves as the skirt. And on the plate, um, she's, got, she's got the sawdust, the magical sawdust from that tree in Anstown. And I think there's some marbles around it. And she was explaining that this is kind of like a symbolic thing in her home country as well. So, so with the idea of no brief, the idea of not having a brief, like people were able to come up with their own uh, agenda in terms of what they wanted to use the clay. Like this Sudanese lady, actually, we weren't asking people what their what they were, um, where they were from, or what their you know what their story was by any means. But like she actually tried to explain to us about her trip across the Mediterranean. And this is actually it depicted down here um, with the emergency services uh, having to gather dead bodies in the water. Uh, and that's her on a boat over there. Um, I think that's her on a boat. Yeah, that's her on a boat in the Mediterranean. Uh, so it was quite emotional, to be honest, um, because even though that was not under any circumstances part of our brief, to kind of like connect emotionally or whatever it was purely a welcome project but like people were using the art form as a means it's kind of like art therapy i suppose as a means of therapy for themselves that they wanted to explain how things in their country are made like i don't know if you remember that man um, mary in uh, in the waterford library who built that amazing uh, structure uh of the bamboos around the edge and there's a little doorway and there's grass and straw on the edge it's, very tribal kind of like what you'd see in the in the amazon kind of a thing uh you know and it was a moat and it was like and he just like was consumed for an hour and a half so people will reflect their own sensibilities i think once the materials are 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 laid out to him now at this stage um is there anybody would like to throw in a question you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and kind of say at this stage if if you find it a bit intimidating kind of bringing in raw materials and going without a challenge, without without a brief, and challenging yourself without a brief uh, with a group. If you find that uh, difficult, like I've worked in lots of primary schools and I've done teach the teacher things in teacher centres and all kinds of things, and teachers do sometimes find 
oh no, I'd have to have kind of instructions and it's a busy day or if it's a primary school, there's that, that terrible thing, the curriculum has to be met at the end of the term or whatever. So, so you know, so for me, that, that for me, if there's, if there's one thing I could pass on um, as one of the takeaways is, is kind of like not to be frightened, not to be frightened of going in uh, without, uh, 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 without a brief. So, uh, so Fergus is just saying there, unmute. And, yeah, so, do, so please, does anyone like to uh, throw in, or Mary, would you like to throw in something at that stage, at this stage, uh, in terms of uh, where we're at? Well, it was just like you were saying, Sean, you know, that especially in Dungarvan Library, we had some um, Syrian and Middle Eastern families. And like the first week, the dad would come in with the family and then he'd wave goodbye and go away for the two hours and come back. And he That's might right. come back a few minutes early and the children were calling him to ask him. And by the like by the third workshop, the dads were staying and they were That's getting right. stuck in and working with the clay and that. And also then a lot of the kids, obviously, the, some of the adults had good English because we we had been on the ETBs and they put us in touch with the um, classes um, who were teaching the adults um, English. Um, but the kids didn't have English, but they just were able to communicate like through the art that some kid would be making something and somebody else would go and help and start adding bits and and you know helping them and they create something and it was it was great sorry i'm super now i'm going to i'm going to um turn on turn on my video on my phone i don't know if you can see me on a different screen there uh there i am yes holding can you see me there yeah so we're going to go old school here now and if this works it'll be great i'm going to turn this around and you can see my can you see my laptop? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to play a little excerpt from this little video. Okay, and shout out if you can't hear it or the picture is too bad. Uh, but, uh, so let's see if this works. And this is to give you a taste of the workshops in progress. If you just center it a bit more, Sean. Just don't that better? Yeah. yeah. So, I suppose, as, as you, you can, can see, see, it's basically, basically a time-lapse um, that features uh, every, every single, single photograph, photograph, actually, that was taken on the project, project is included in this little film. film. It's it's not, not, this is not, not online, online anywhere, this film, film so, so I sometimes, sometimes show it at these uh, workshops. workshops. Um, so, so it gives you a kind of a flavour for the material, so I would like you to kind of... Focus in on, on the materials and, and the, way, the, the, way the way everybody is just participating in their, in their own way, in their own style, in their own, own building their own. This is not, not guided art. art. Like, like it's literally, these families, families are creating using whatever, whatever the materials are brought on along on the day. day. So, so focusing focus on, on the materials, materials and uh, I, can I can see there uh, some sticks and some cones, some string, lollipop sticks. Those, Those uh, wooden, wooden stacking uh, toys, toys that others use. There's, there's nets, straw, marbles. This kid, kid built a beautiful, beautiful desert. desert. There's, there's pizza. pizza. There's, there's nets, nets again. And, and look at the feathers, feathers used in sandcastles. I mean, sandcastles sand are the most famous sandcastles sand sand made in, in the library. library. And, uh, uh, you know, a sandcastle sand is a great opening uh, thing as well. well. You, you bring a bucket and the sand indoors. That's the first thing that anyone will make with it. They'll, they'll make, make a sandcastle. Sand and, and if you, you give them things to stick in the sandcastle, magic, magic will happen. Because look at all these things, things you can do. do. Combine, Combine the materials. materials. Here's, Here's the air drying, drying clay. clay.
John Ferg is here. For some reason now, we, on the main screen, we can only see you holding your camera up. It, 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 ah, it, okay. Now it's it's on. It's good again. Oh, it's, oh, it's good again. again. Okay. okay. Uh, just center it a bit more. Lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's working great. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. A bit lower again. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, yeah so, so look, look at that matchsticks. Match I mean, what, what you can, can do with those matchsticks. I mean, look at the bottle tops. tops. I mean, bottle tops. I mean, I have, I have a friend in the toy factory that saves me all the uh, bits that they don't use and the monopoly boards, and they use always ringing me and saying, take all these things up. So there's materials in your in your locality, like there's people in your group that have truckloads of um, lollipop sticks or pencils or whatever they might be. So, you know, um, now yeah, rock, rock stacking, stacking, look at that, how, how simple that is. Rock, rock stacking. Just, just bring it, a dozen, dozen rocks into, into a room. room. Sandcastles Sand again. again. Better sticks. sticks. Building, Building blocks. A couple of shovels. It's, it's quite, quite easy to clean up afterwards. afterwards. Although, Although sometimes... sometimes Sand, sand can get everywhere, everywhere in carpet. carpet. Watch out for carpet. Car carpet, carpet room. Just, just be careful, careful with the eggs. eggs. So, so, like, like, from, from, like from, when, when Mary and I, I uh, would, would start, start the workshop, it was literally, hey guys, welcome, guys, welcome in. in. We'd, We'd have, have a, a little chat, chat and you know, know here's all the materials today, today but there's absolutely no structure. Um to what, what we were hoping everyone would make or anything, or anything. there was, was no structure at all. And whether people want to just work as a family unit, unit uh, or kind of mix it up and or do their own thing, thing. and that, that was, was, that was fine, fine too. too. So, so, and and it was just a case of like, like uh, connecting, connecting with them all and making suggestions and um, getting stuck, stuck in ourselves, having a bit of fun, experimenting, really. And like, like one, one of my, 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 my next, next kind of takeaway take thing um, that, that I'm going, going to suggest on this project, project for you. Uh, can, can, can you actually can you hear me okay? okay. Uh, yes, we can hear you. There's a tiny echo because you have two machines on, but we can understand everything you're saying. You only slide okay. off so, every now and again. It cuts to you holding the phone, and then something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry about, about this uh, old tech, tech, but I, I think, think it's, uh, it's, uh, this is the best, best we, we, we can do under the circumstances. circumstances. Uh, yeah, so, it's more, it's more. Uh, so, 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 so the one, one big takeaway, takeaway um, I, I would, would suggest, suggest is if you, you look, look, you look, look at these, these workshops, workshops, right? Look, look what all these, these people are making. making. Like well, you've got a piece of air aboard, a piece of insulation, and we're sticking things in. We've got the clay, we've got the straw. But the big thing here to remember is at the end of these workshops, Everything, Everything is disassembled, disassembled and, put and put away. away. So, so these, these are temporary artworks. artworks. And, and that, that for me, me again is something that you should try and uh, challenge yourself with your group. Like, we, we all get, get stuck, stuck into the rut of like, like um, here it is and, and it's finished and it's dried and, and we hang it on the wall or stick it on the bridge or uh, it's a great to show our pride for our children's art. Uh, and, and bring, bring it, it home, and the parents love to see it with the uh, glue and glitter and dripping off of it. it. But uh, what, what I would like, like to encourage is try temporary art. art. You, you know, know, the photographs remain, and, and the memories. memories. Like, you know, I, I, I have, have met, met some of these kids, kids and they all recognize me. They go, oh, you're, you're the man that does remember this memory. And they remember all the nests, they remember the marble or the magic that happened. And they all have to be part of the, the idea, idea of, 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 of taking everything apart, apart at the end. end. And, and that's, that's a beautiful part of the process, if you ask me, because it, it's, it's about um, letting go. It doesn't, doesn't have, have to be exhibited, exhibited afterwards. Um, Sean, there's some one or two questions coming in. Do you want to cut to that? Because he's cutting back. Sure, I think we'll, 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 we'll pause. We'll pause. We'll close we'll 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 this video now, I think. And, uh, Just on the video, um, Sean, um, Neva Donovan has suggested you can pin the screen showing the phone view. Sorry. Sorry. 
Uh, Neve, Neve, if you want to unmute and explain what you're saying there, please. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, no, what I meant is that everyone, like all of us, that we're watching, we can pin the, the one that we're looking at for the phone view ourselves. If you hover over the right hand corner of the screen, it'll dots pop off. You click on the three dots, and then you will show, and it says pin screen or pin view. So here. Oh, oh, no, no, If, if I, I if I hit play, play now, now, if I, I turn, turn down the volume, volume on this, how's, how's that? that? Is that any better? better? I think we've lost Neve. Um, I think she was saying that pinning was each participant watching can do it, but I'm not sure. Okay. 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 okay well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to close, close this now anyway. anyway. I'm starting to get a pain, pain in my left arm from holding this up. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 yeah, yeah. So, 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 so look, that gives you an insight into like the hands on nature of the workshops. And, and for me, me um, can you all hear me? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so, for me, well, it's, it's 10 to 12, so I would like to take a few questions if anyone has any questions about if you look, the book. If you look, Sean, at the bottom of the chat function, I can read out a question from Karen McKeague. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Uh, did the participants know each other before the project? But Mary, would you like to take that one in terms of the, the, the family units? Yeah. And just sure. before we do, Sean, if you could turn off one of your screens, because you keep echoing because you two mics on. Perfect. Perfect. I'll turn this one on. Okay. So, um, the, did the participants know each other before the project? No, they didn't. Some of the mums knew one another from the um, ESOL ETB groups that they attended, but like the families didn't know one another at all. Um, and a lot of them joined up the library as well, which was another kind of goal of the program. Um, I think, like as as I said, Karen, yeah, it was only for the three weeks. Um, because of um, the funding and the whole uh, dormant accounts kind of brief behind it. But even when we were doing the workshops, we had a lot of like the local children would have been visiting the library and they wanted to join in. So I think if it hadn't been for COVID, we probably could have rolled out something, you know, similar um, on a weekly or maybe a monthly basis for the library. And um, then obviously with COVID, I think the families, they have continued just as members of the library, but just with the whole situation with the events being curtailed and that we haven't really got back to hands on stuff yet. But hopefully going forward again now in the spring that we will be able to do something uh, with them all again. And I suppose like in a different setting, Mary, like if, if some of the people attending here I mean, it would make a beautiful six or eight week project where you're where you're where you're not trying to make a book and photograph everything. Do you know what I mean? If you're doing a kind of an art project where it's temporary art, it's environmental art. You know, we we, we only did nine workshops over the course of three weeks because really, I suppose the other half of what we were trying to get across was this message of welcome and you know get get these two thousand copies out to help other people kind of look at the simple resources you can use. Um, so does that answer your question, Karen? Yep, thank you. Perfect. So um, so is there any other questions there? I have a couple of, um, I have four or five little notes here to uh, get across before the end, but has uh, anybody else got a question there? Okay, so um, so I suppose from 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 my perspective, um, uh, like, it, it, like Fergus has kind of explained to us kind of like the settings that you're all working in. And I suppose from my perspective, um, uh, like what I really would like to think that um, one of you or, or five of you or 10 of you will take on board some simple little actions with your group. All right. And just to kind of recap on some of the things um, that I really would uh, encourage you to do is like, number one, buy a bag of air drying clay. Uh, like it's, if you haven't got one in your group already, just get a book, get a bucket of mud even from your garden if you have to, or if you can get down to the craft center, buy a bucket of air drying clay. It does wonders. I mean, once you see a family or a kid or a dad or, or a, a mom with their hands in the clay, magic will happen. Right. It really does. 
Second thing is, as one of the points I was making there is uh, less tools and more tactile. So again, you know, you don't need, you know, get them down on their hands and knees, uh, scratching the ground or gathering feathers, uh, gathering leaves or, you know, making things out of twigs. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, so, so less tools, you know, you don't need lots of tools for this kind of stuff. So it's, just get tactile. And then the third thing is um, start gathering materials, right? So if you can look at what your group, if you're going to do a three week or four week or five week and introduce this kind of thing into, into a weekly practice for you with your group, start gathering materials, look at materials differently, look at your recycle bin, you know, I mean, if you can gather, you know, something, uh, whether it's, whether it's uh, egg cartons or yogurt things or, or bits of aluminium that shouldn't be or bits of tinfoil that's not good for the environment or you know, uh, things. Th if you can look at things differently in terms of gathering your materials, whether they're from nature or whether they're from recycled materials uh, rather than buying things new as well. So start gathering your materials. And uh, like out there behind me, uh, like I have shelves and shelves and shelves full of uh, lunch boxes. You know, one lunch box has got like uh, bottle tops. Another one's got like uh, marbles. Another one's got like I've got uh, about 300 old dice. I've got like, you know, so just look at your materials, simple materials. Uh, even Paul has got a collection of books beautifully stacked up. Are they books, Paul? They are. Or, or DVDs. And you know, simple little things like, I mean, look at that. I mean, you bring that into a group, right? You bring a, like we, we did one, Mary, with like a hundred books, didn't we? Like where we had like a, loads of books and you can, you can stack them, you can build them, you can make towers, put something across the top and suddenly you've got a doorway. So just gather materials, look at materials differently. You don't need A4 paper and pencils when you're talking with this. Now you can incorporate that, uh, but just gather materials. Uh, and so then the other thing I was saying during during the webinar here was um, um, challenge yourself, uh, be brave, bring these materials to the group and allow the magic to happen without a brief. So for me, that idea, um, like if you're a primary school teacher, I know it's daunting. The principal is going to come in and all the children are covered in feathers and you're going to like, what are they going to say? Oh my, what? Oh my, no. But I promise you, magic will happen. That kid or, uh, or that group will just, they won't want to leave. They just won't want to leave. Once they get stuck into something that they haven't been given a brief, they just, here's all the materials. What are we going to do today, lads? And just give it a couple of minutes and before long, just the magic will start happening. And then the final takeaway um, that I recall um, is the temporary nature of environmental art. So, so like when some of the groups that were with us, um, you know, as Mary was kind of saying, some of the dads, you know, it took the third week of them coming back before they realized that, oh, well, I can stack that. He's got those, he's got hundreds of those bottles. So I could make a tear out of those or, you know, actually getting down on their knees with their toddler, you know, and the idea of it being temporary as well then is kind of like, you don't have to bring this home. You don't have to stick it on the fridge. It doesn't have to be uh, glue dripping glitter down your, uh, you know, in your parents, in the parents' car going home. Think temporary, okay? And what you'll actually pass on to the groups and the families and the kids, if when they understand the process of temporary, you'll actually pass on a way, way, way bigger thing than just we get, we we made a piece of art. You'll pass on this thing that it's okay. It can be, you know, time is in, impermanent, that things come and things go, life, life is fluid. And that, that for me is a huge, huge, huge life lesson in terms of, you know, that you can really communicate without even saying it in a language, you can communicate that so simply uh, with art, uh, so the temporary nature of it. Is there any other takeaways that um, anybody else might be able to use there? Can anybody throw me a takeaway that they might be able to incorporate into their group? I see Marie Maluli said, very inspirational, great way to bring people together. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. Like, I mean, especially when there's people with different languages that can't communicate with a language. Like if you bring people together with a half, of, half a van load, do it with half a van the next time rather than a full van load of stuff. But if you bring people together with all these raw materials, it's a common, they can communicate. It's a common language. It's all these things. So bringing people together in a room full of these things, I guarantee you they won't be bored. So is there anything else you can take away from it? Like, is there is there anything that you can, a simple little thing uh, that you can bring to your group? Karen McCaig is asking, 
Sean, have you done this type of workshop with children with sensory issues? Yes, um, I've worked all over the country in special needs schools um, um, and uh, I've like that was like up to a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, and my favorite thing with sensory groups um, would be um, would be uh, mosaic, to be honest. But when the COVID came, like passing around lots of treasure, as we call it, it wasn't really seen as something that's, you know, uh, Johnny is bringing in loads of these things and Mary is bringing it. It's just mixing hand contact. So, so that just disappeared overnight. But when things, um, or with a, with a smaller pod, like the idea of uh, mosaic, uh, it, 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 it's similar in ways to what we've done with this book because it's, it's about gathering materials, right? And it's one of the takeaways, one of my five takeaways there is gather the materials. And whether they're natural materials like this and temporary art, or with a mosaic, often it would be stuck together uh, on a wall in the school. Like we've, we've done mosaics up to 24 foot wide. So like kids with sensory issues, I suppose for me, um, it's about taking it at their pace. You know, um, I mean, special needs assistants are brilliant because they know uh, what is and isn't going to work. And then like for me as a facilitator, I just like to step back uh, and allow things to evolve uh, at, a, at, at the pace of the kid and the special needs assistant and the teacher. Uh, so for me, it's about bringing the materials. And, and when you bring materials as well to a group, uh, I wonder if I could find something here now. If you bring, if I brought that, this cup into a group of kids, right, and uh, they can't see what's in it, uh, they're, they're distracted away from me towards they're focused on what he got in the cup. Or, so for me, with tactile groups, like, so for, for example, I might sometimes walk into a group with a box, okay, and I've got things in the box, and it's got a ribbon, or say, this isn't the box, I might have a fancy box, a silver box, or a purple box. But for me, it's distract. It's pulling away from this new person that they've just encountered. They're focused in on the box. So for me, that's one of my the tools of my uh, trade in terms of like what's in the box. And you can see you all wondering what you got in the cup. And actually, I think this box deserves to have all the things that are in the cup. I think this this box deserves to have all the things that are in the cup poured in. So here we go. So I have some of my treasure, which is now in this box. And for me, from a tactile point of view, from a sensory point of view, if you can focus away from uh, from the from me, do you know what I mean? And, and put this other thing between me and you, that, this, that we can focus our attention into this other thing, then the bond for me, uh, I might only be with that group for an hour a week or whatever, it's, it's, it's way easier for me to connect with the group because, because we've got this other... We've got this other stuff to think about and the treasure where is it there it is there's the treasure in there look at those look at those little beauties it's stuck together one day and some okay so uh it's 12 o'clock i'm sure you have other things i think it's 12 we're, we're, yeah we're we have to finish up there. unfortunately and um, just two quick things before we finish i see paul cahill has a good point there he said i work with both roma and traveler communities and think that this is a great opportunity to bring these minorities together and also um if, if you'd like a copy of the book later today or on Monday, I'm going to send around Mary's presentation and you can, is that right, Mary? They can email you for copies of the book and she can post them out to you. Yeah, so, that's fine. I can make copies available if you want a, a lot, a, a one or a lot. We can, I can organize that. No okay. problem. Thank you. I'll send around Mary's presentation after. So it just leaves me to say thanks very, very much to Sean and Mary for really engaging and innovative and enthusiastic presentation. It was just lovely. And though poor Sean, the technology went wrong and he was going to show that video obviously <laughs> on the screen and it looked brilliant. I saw it beforehand. It didn't, it didn't phase him. He just, he just plowed on and, you know, so thanks so much for putting so much effort in and for a, obviously a, a wonderful project. Um, and thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it and, can try something a bit like that in your center or wherever you work. So um, it'll be recorded and in, sometime next week, I'll, I'll put this recording onto the NALA YouTube channel. So listen, thanks everyone. Thanks, Sean, and thanks, Mary, it was fab. Bye. No problem. Thanks a lot now, and I really hope that you can implement some of that in your group. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks, thanks for Nala. Thanks, thanks Sean. Very good, thank you.